I'm here today, uh, colleagues, to add the voice of government to the good work you are doing voluntarily as part of your patriotic contribution to the nation building. None of you are remunerated for the extra task you do in the Men for Change movement. You could use the time you invest in the Men for Change movement to do your own personal activities, but you chose to participate in a bigger cause that benefit humanity than your own selves. The first words we want to utter today is a very big thank you to all of you and to all members of the Men for Change movement for the outstanding work you have been doing in our communities since the movement was established in 2004. <laughs> Dinge Zinja's premier and he's in the Ingalanya because we've got to redouble our effort to confront the crisis that we are dealing with in our society. Kandiza Utlala Pansi, Mpatin Kobo, the Afunu Gutinja, this strategy is at our disposal for all of us to take the fight against crime to criminals. I would like the Men for Change movement to locate its program of action for the next three years in this integrated crime and violence prevention strategy of government. That would be in line with the district development model of government, which encourages integration. As I depart uh, the stage, let me once again reiterate that we rely on you as the ANC-led government to be our trusted partner to build safe communities in our province. May the resolutions of this AGM reflect movement that truly wants to effectively and make a change in the lives of our people. The basis for the formation of the Men for Change movement was, was to fight the scourge of gender-based violence in our province. But they are kind of showing the opposite lately. In the early 90s, the World Bank report on health highlighted gender-based violence as a priority public health concern, particularly among women. Colleagues, gender-based violence has grown past that stage of being a public health concern. It is now a second pandemic, as alluded to by the president of our country, President Cyril Ramaphosa, in his 2020 Women's Day address to the nation. Think of the mortality associated with assault on women, its long-term effect on their physical and mental health. Think of the gyne gynecological problems rape victims go through, particularly children. Think of the sexual transmitted diseases, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder and suicide and other thoughts that women go through. Consequently, Lusikisiki has been declared the rape capital of South Africa. Yogelendo Provincial Commissioner, the Kula program, Ubun Balselangayo, it is now tata the entire exco, yes, Eastern Cape, to join that uh, protest, that awareness campaign, rape awareness campaign in Lusikisiki. It just can't be right that a poor area like that, a vulnerable area like that, an area that still needs a lot of attention, uh, developmental, Ibei area is a national rape capital. What about Abandu and Abapaya? What about Omamabapa? And unfortunately, most people about Salapaya, Basabens, the Houghton, Bases, mine, Kushege, Omama, Emakaya, and Abandua. So those women clearly are vulnerable to this kind of thing. So we're going there. Uh, we want to mobilize traditional leadership. It's no, it's no longer going just to be a SAPS program. We are joining your program and the entire social partners of our province will be joining your PC in Lusikisiki doing that campaign across the streets of that town, uh, sensitizing our people about this problem that now has actually got the national attention. And our constitutional democracy, which promotes rights of all citizens. The customary practice of Ugutwala has been declared to be a criminal offense and has been incorporated uh, into the Trafficking in Persons Act. 
The criminalization of the customary practice of Ogutwala is long overdue and is in, is in line with the value system that is espoused in our constitution of building a non-sexist and a prosperous society based on justice, equality, the rule of, the rule of law, and the inalienable human rights for all. Ogutwala is one of the patriarchal customs of our country that have disempowered women and violated their freedoms for generations and has no place in a society based on the principles of equality. Ebai, but abantu tabe moshe ne pa kuspaza shop sabo ekali be moshe ne be boto pofu be moshe na gezbo ne lelo zga holmende u holmende bebe zamu ba inwe dangas u value u bomba manu ba guti. You can imagine that pa imada well is not functioning. Pa imada well there's the biggest call center. Ka, ka discovery health ne kuha la call center ileba ngema onga malogo ka discovery akwa zufuna ekhazi ngake zawo ze medical aid le tontoni abantu abafuna uncedwa ngazo so xa kungazophangela ebhayi thethe ukuthi that system has collapsed xa kuza utshiswa idepo eseloshini when we say we want people to come back into our township and develop our township so uthi abantu abanyale imali kwa kweza bus na kweza depo mabazivale eza depo bahambe bathathe eza bus bayozokhela edolophi kulandawo eseyingathi yona inoxwanga there's something wrong with that when you ban eight buses those eight buses are driven by fathers and mothers of our homes so kukho abantu abavuka bengena msebenzi namhlanje kwezi buses zabo zichill and when those people are retrenched uh, next month no one understand how these people are retrenched so when companies uh, first of all this morning the tunyeli message you know, workers cannot come to work because the location value we have targets to meet on these cars that were manufacturing some of these targets are needed in other countries as well exporting so what do we do when the first vaccine closed down in nelson mandela more than 5,000 people will be jobless what is going to happen government is not working so we really want to appeal to our people uh, wherever uh, people are you have a right to protest but don't do these things that have got catastrophic effects uh, in the economy of our country. Sitagegi sama police, kabando abadala, abamosha besazba, bayamosha. 